everybody can choose. In community of property or out of community yes. of property, you can do without a contract. You can just pick one or the other. If you want something different, you can still make an antinuptial contract and have whatever you know, kind cruel, of property regime you want. Accrual or cruel. remove certain property um, from being shared True. and share everything else. So mm -hmm. Lots of things you can do with that, that contract. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that this law reform, which is still making its way through the system, would do a lot to ameliorate the marital property problems that have been created by this Native Administration Proclamation. It would not speak to the inheritance issues, no, not yet. but it would at least get people who, where, where, where both spouses are still living to yes. be able to get what they thought that they were, were having in the first place. Yes. I know that th there was a case uh, that was cited by, by LAC where a couple accumulated a substantial wealth, uh, including properties and, and, and so on, which was registered in one partner's name. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think this is the case that led to some, some of the sections of this proclamation being uh, uh, ruled out by, by, by the court. Um, but now looking at this, what are the chances of an applicant really winning similar cases uh, in, in, in the event there is this, this problem? You know, it's, it's difficult to predict because this proclamation has been um, before the court several times. Yes. Um, but uh, in, other than the one case that we already spoke about, the court has been able to resolve the dispute without having to get to the question of constitutionality. And that's something that's kind of a standard thing. A court only decides as much as is necessary to decide. You know, when, you, when someone brings a dispute before the court, they don't say, well, let's decide these six different issues. They say, what is necessary? for this court to decide to resolve this case. So in the cases that have raised the marital property regime issues, the court has, uh, uh, in all of those cases so far, has been able to say, OK, well, we don't need to talk about the constitutionality. We can resolve this on the facts or, or, or you know, in some other way. Yeah. So um, it depends on the profile of the case. It, but um, I hope that we will be able to see this sorted out by law reform. Because one thing that, that, that Doris raised already when a court knocks something out as being unconstitutional, it does often leave a gap. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think the ideal situation would be to see some mm -hmm. more, more rapid law reforms to sort out these family law issues. You know, family law gets neglected, but it is the thing that affects everybody yes. in the country. Family True. law should be one of the highest priorities yes. because it affects so, so, so many people. Yes. But l let's give a scenario where these two people, two individuals, live here in commerce, for example. This is mm -hmm. where they decide. Mm -hmm. Then they decide to go and get married. But then they decide to go and officiate their marriage in Katima Mulilo. They live in Munduka. Yeah. They decide to go on the other side of the police zone or former mm -hmm. police zone or red line and have their marriage uh, officiated on the other side. But this is with at least perhaps one of the two, bearing the in mind side. that once we, once we go on the other side, obviously then it will be out of community of, there's, there's an issue of dishonesty. No, but there's an issue of confusion there, if I can yes. say, because we researched this specific question. Right. Does the law mean people who reside north of the police zone, yes. or people who have their marriage north of the, We can find no case law on this. We can find no hint right. of what it means. So that's a question that the courts haven't decided yet. Is the question, where do you live, or is the question, where, where do you, you get, get married? married? The law is ambiguous. The wording of the law is ambiguous. It's, it's very funny that we should talk about this, because right. there are several cases that we had where this was an issue we needed to discuss. But l unfortunately, the courts never really got an opportunity to discuss yeah. or to, to decide on the issue, because we would settle. I, I am a firm believer that no divorce case should actually go to trial. Yeah. So you yeah. aim to settle them, but it's a very important question that the court really yeah. has to decide on because if, it's, if you reside there, then obviously that would not be applicable to those people that yeah. stay here and right. then go and get yeah. married there. On the other side, But yeah. if it's marriage, if it's only where your marriage is officiated, then obviously it would be anybody would qualify that go and marry, get married on, the police, on, this, on that side would then qualify to be married out of community property. Yeah. Mm. Which, again, is another reason why people should make sure, and even if it's um, unnecessary, it's best to make an agreement to make the declaration before the magistrate or to make the antinuptial contract to be absolutely sure what they're having. And 
that's one of the problems with the default regime. The lower form as it stands now, look, it's not final yet, but the last version that I saw wouldn't have a default. The idea would be the marriage officer must say to you, what marital property regime do you, do you want? want? Default is dangerous because that means something happens and you don't know what's happening to yes. you. Yes. Happening automatically is not a good thing. I'm much pr um, I'm more in favor of a system that says, do you want A, do you want B, do you want C? Before I marry you, you must make a decision so that, you, that nothing is happening to you by assumption, by automatic uh, um, operation of law. And I think that would be much safer because then people would have clarity about what choice they're making and what they are getting when, when they say those vows. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate thing is that people are currently under the impression that if the marriage officer at the date of marriage asked them how they wanted to be married, whether it was in or out, and they said in or out, whether you're in the north or in mm -hmm. Vertigo, wherever, they're of the opinion that that is how they actually got mm -hmm. married. And this is where it's important that if you have a default system, at least explain it to me so that I know that yeah. yes or no, if no, should I do a contract or whatever? Because the yeah. marriage officers are also not properly trained. Yes. That's the problem, because if they don't understand it, they can't explain the process to you. Yeah. Yes. Namibia's red line case um, is almost similar to that of South Africa then, but that was until the amendment of the Marriage and Matrimonial Property Law Amendment Act, number three of 1988. What is it that Namibia can and or could learn to correct perhaps uh, from the South African uh, laws that would then maybe is correct this native proclamation law? What is it that we can learn from our South African neighbors? I would prefer to say I don't think we always have to look only to South Africa. Yes. I think that we look around the world at comparative jurisdictions. Let me give you an example. There are some countries who have something that's kind of a modified in community of property that everything is shared, but only from the date of the marriage. Yes. And, and I think that's an, that South Africa does not offer that as a system, and Namibia is not proposing to do it at the moment. Mm. But I think that could be a very, very fair system to say we're having a partnership, but the partnership doesn't take, it's not me bringing things into the marriage from my past. It starts on the day that we become married. Yes. That's just an example that, that comes, I think, I think that comes from Ethiopia. So I think we could look around uh, for a lot of different I, I countries. I know countries like ideas. Norway, for example, also have yeah. that. But Our population is very far flung and you know, there are a few urban centers, but then we have a much more of a rural population. So I think some of the solutions that work in South Africa don't necessarily work in Namibia. So certainly we always, um, it always makes sense to look at what South Africa has done. But I would say that the best approach is that we look around, look around the world and, and then try to decide what, what makes sense for Namibia. But as I said, some of these law reforms that we've been talking about are already well on the way. Research has been done. Um, ideas have been put on the table. It's just that final push to get some of these law reforms in place. And I think particularly well, the cust customary it, law. It, it's taking a while. It is. It's taking quite it a is. while. I mean, look at, look at the divorce bill we were talking about, 2004, yes. and then now we have something else we need to look at. Yes. But also maybe just to add with regards to the accrual, you know? Yes. Ms. Kambi, just, just hold. We have Mario from Angwediva. Mario? Mario, good evening. Hello, how are you? Yes, uh, Mario, can you good hear Good evening, us? how are you? Good, thank you. Yourself, your contribution. Good evening, you. Hello? Y yes, Mario, go, go, go right ahead. All right, thank, thank you. Suppose I'm married in community of property. And I'm in the Rundu, for example. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. And I'm in the Rundu, and I'm married in community of property. What happens to my properties when I divorce? Suppose I bought the properties before we got married, legally married. That's my question. Well, you, you are married in Rundu, and you are married in, in community of property. Mario? Okay, I think well, we've lost let's, Mario, but... Yeah. Let's look at both scenarios. Yeah. Yes. So, for example, if Mario is married in Rundu and Rundu falls on the other side of the red line, yes. then obviously he's not married in community of property unless yes. he has made a declaration 
in front, in front of a marriage officer to say that he wants to get married, a magistrate that he wants to get married in community of property. And that should obviously done, be done within a month before the marriage. So if that is done, then it's fine. Then he is married in community of property. If he did not do so, then unfortunately Mario is married out, out of community, of community of, property, of property, which basically means that whatever he had before his marriage, whatever he has within his marriage, is his. So it, there's no joint estate. But if he's married in community of property, if you have a million dollars before you get married, and at the date of marriage, I have zero, you have a million. When we get married, I and we get married in community of property, we have a million dollars. Mm. And when we decide to get divorced, I have $500,000. <laughs> Although one thing people forget is that community of property applies to debts as well as assets. Exactly. So if I get married and um, at the date of my marriage, I owe somebody a million dollars on my bond exactly. for my house or what have you, then my partner can also mm. be, be, part of, be responsible for that debt. Mm. So that's one thing that I think people forget. It's sharing the debts and the, and assets. the assets. That is what community of property is. All right. We have a caller from Hibion. Caller, good evening. Good evening. Yes. Your contribution I, I or question? I can hear you, but, but I will make my contribution. Right. Mine is, I, 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 I just, for me, I, it's difficult to understand that you keep a law applicable of 1928, while, to my understanding, as the law, the law reads, to my understanding, it's a contradiction to the, com to the constitution of the country when it comes to fundamental rights, your freedom to decide. So then, then, then I think that law can only be applicable if still in use. If not in use and in contradiction to your Namibian constitution, then it cannot be valid anymore. So I think that that law must be uh, 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 scrapped or take, uh, take off because it's in contradiction with the Namibian constitution. Mm. Thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mm. I, I think the caller is basically just thank alluding you, to, to the fact that <laughs> yeah. if law does not serve the people, then it's of no I use. See. And yes. I think we're all agreed this law should be yeah. scrapped. I, I can only agree with the yeah. caller 100%. Yes, True. but Ms. Kambi, you were busy explaining yeah, a cool. scenario, I think. So yes. what I wanted to explain is that I normally say, and, and probably it's not the right way to say it because we have two marital res, uh, regimes. It's in a community property and out of community property. But I always say that we've snuck in a third one, which mm -hmm. we've borrowed from South Africa, which, we, which is the accrual system. Now, you know, accrual we bring in by contract. So you can get married out of community of property, and then we say, okay, fine, in the contract we make provision for the accrual. And basically what that means is at date of marriage, whatever we accumulate as a couple, that is what we will share. But anything that I have had before the marriage would not, would not be applicable. Mm -hmm. The only confusion that it brings in is the fact that, remember, in South Africa, they have a law that, that, that regulates this. Now, with us, if it's not in the contract, it's very difficult for the courts to legislate mm -hmm. because they can't really look at anything outside the contract because you've said this is how, how our marriage should be regulated by contract. So you have to look at the contract. And you don't always make proper provision for it because you would find a shorter version. We have a shortened version that we always accommodate uh, the accrual with where we would say that there are certain ways that you can for example, say that it would not find application as when you declared insolvent, et cetera, and that, for example, anything that I inherit would not form part of the accrual. Mm. So you mm. try and, and, and accommodate mm. in the contract as much as you can, but you're not doing justice because in South Africa it's a system. So that's one of the things that we've borrowed from South Africa, but similarly to what Diane said, there's a lot of other jurisdictions that have more beautiful examples that we could use. So it's just a matter of doing the necessary research and drafting the necessary law and consulting. Yeah. When it's a marriage in community of property, as I stated, I have a million dollars, you have zero. We get married, we have a million dollars. We get divorced, you have 500, I have 500. Unless I can prove currently that you are the cause, for example, you've committed adultery. And as a result of your adultery, you have not contributed, for example, at the house the way that you should have. I can then go to court and say, but I've done all the correction, I've done all the, the, the contributions in this marriage. And as a result of that, I do not want you to share 
in the million dollars that I have brought into this marriage. Right. Because for some other reason, you are at fault. You have not contributed at all. So I want the million dollars. I want to keep it. We call that forfeiture of benefits, which basically means that the court would have to consider whether there's valid grounds to say that you've not contributed to cent. But the courts are very reluctant of late to do that. Mm. What they would basically look at is there must be something that you've contributed, whether you've bought food, et cetera, et cetera. There's actually a case where they stipulated that they are not inclined to just say that you can't get anything. I must literally come to court and say, this is exactly what I've contributed. This is what you have contributed. And the court might percentage-wise, instead of saying a 50-50, the court might say a 70-30, a 80-20. Mm. Mm. So the court will look at what you've contributed in order to say that you're entitled to that. So that's in respect of a marriage out of community property. In respect of a marriage um, in community of property. But out of community of property, there's, no, there's nothing to be divided because there is no joint estate. We have decided that our estate should remain separate. So what is mine is mine. What is yours is yours. So there's nothing to divide when we, when we, get, mar when we get divorced. I take my bag, you take your bag, and we, we leave. But in respect of death, what basically happens in a marriage out of com in community of property is that if you're married in community of property, remember it's a joint estate. We've decided to become one in terms of our property. So that has to be divided at death, right? So 50% of what you have, what we have, because it's a million dollars that we have, 50% then goes to the, the one spouse that's alive because that's by virtue of the marriage. I'm not getting it as a result of your death or whatever, but this is by virtue of the marriage. The other 50% is what has to be divided because that 50% belongs to the deceased spouse. And that 50% now has to be divided amongst his heirs. Now, the wife is added as a child, right? So if I have four children, the wife is added, that's five, have to now divide the 500,000 of the husband, which means each one gets 100,000. My 500,000 remains intact. It's, mine, it's yours by virtue of the marriage. Yes, and I want to I want to make I want to use this example just to concretize why I say that. If, for example, I'm responsible for killing you, right? I cannot derive any benefit from killing you. Now, the law then says that you cannot inherit from that person. But if we are married in community of property, that five hundred thousand, as a result of the marriage, that five hundred thousand has nothing to do with inheritance. Mm. Do you understand? It that, that, that is your 50%. That is mine. The law cannot yes. take it away. Yeah. But the 100,000 that I would have received from you, because that's the inheritance, that 100,000 I will no longer receive because my hand caused your death. So it's a Dutch term, a Roman Dutch term that they could say, the blood of hand erft niet. So you cannot inherit from, from the misfortune that you've caused.